So how you doing out there? This is Patrick Irvin, and this is another response video to a lot of the comments and the videos that I've been tagged in or, or uh, have been shared on my wall regarding uh, black people and people wanting to give us advice about how we can stop being killed by the police. Um, which this type of activity, this type of victim blaming, I want to point out, is only advocated for and only acceptable, it seems like, when, uh, when it comes to black people being killed or abused, uh, and in particularly by the police. Um, and to those that have asked about the few minutes with Pat series, don't worry, I'm going to get back to that YouTube series. Um, I just got to get some stuff together first. Now, moving on. So the very first thing I want to do is address this argument that if black people had a better appearance, they wouldn't be killed. And the very first thing I want to do is draw the similarity between that argument and the equally stupid argument that suggests that if women stopped wearing skirts, they would stop getting raped. You see how, how asinine that statement is? But why is it acceptable to say that if black people stopped dressing a certain way, we would stop being killed? That's completely asinine. To another point, white people dress the exact same way. White teenagers dress the exact same way as black teenagers in a lot of major cities, um, in a lot of small cities, in a lot of small towns, in a lot of municipalities. And you know the rant of, of the, the uh, structure of government that I used last time, but well, that applies here. But they aren't being killed off at these numbers that we're seeing black people getting killed off at. So that makes the argument unfound and unjust just by that sense alone. But then when you go and look into history, um, I'm a big fan of history, especially black history, because I'm black. Um, when you look at history, the history of black people is not one of being unacceptable in appearance. It's one of wearing stylish fashions it's one of setting trends it's one of wearing the three-piece suits it's one of of women wearing the classy dresses it's one of black people dressing in a very acceptable manner by modern society terms and we still see them being killed by the police marginalized lynched beat up and all these other things so you know that and need to even underscore that the history of sagging in this country in particularly is only about 30 years old at the most. Meanwhile, the history of black people getting murdered, killed, lynched, and all these other things is 140 years old since the very first day that we uh, fought to free ourselves and won our own freedom. One thing that they leave out of the narrative of lynchings in America and black people being brutalized, you know, they, leave, they try to leave out the bulk of that narrative altogether, but they do give some of that narrative. But one of the key aspects that they leave out of that narrative is the fact that a lot of those innocent black people that were lynched and killed and murdered, a lot of white people and a fair amount of black people honestly believed that these people were criminals. This is why this behavior was tolerated. It was not tolerated that uh, black people were not tolerating the fact that they get lynched and that's just the way of life. There has always been a massive propaganda campaign going on to suggest that black people are criminals, deviants, primalistic in nature, primalistic in urges, and unable to contain those primal urges. And so they needed to be uh, uh, cold, or they needed to be exterminated, or their numbers needed to be uh, maintained at a certain level. That type of argument, that type of rhetoric was allowed to persist and was believed by many because of the propaganda that suggested that black people uh, were committing these crimes. So a lot of the people that were hung from the trees, a lot of the strange fruit, as we call them, were people that were uh, innocent now, but in the time, at the time of their hanging, they were uh, believed to be allegedly some sort of criminal some either a thief uh, a, a murderer uh, a rapist that was very popular to uh for a white woman to call a black male a rapist or a molester or to say that he suggested something or he winked at her or otherwise behaved in what was deemed inappropriate behavior for a black male towards a white woman this is the reason why these people were lynched and we see the exact same thing going on today because as soon as a black person is killed by the police or are uh, subjected to anything else the uh, propaganda machine starts at work and all of a sudden you start seeing all these things that don't really matter that may or may not be true starting to find them their way into mainstream media and now all of a sudden it's no longer about the incident of the young man being killed or about the treatment of the case or about the treatment of the young man after he was killed or about anything else now it's about the young man's character in general we saw the same thing with Trayvon Martin, we saw the same thing with Mike Brown, we saw the same thing with John Crawford, 
We saw the same thing. We're, we're seeing the same thing right now with Eric Gardner. You can go down the line. Almost every instance, the propaganda machine starts to work and it starts identifying flaws and making allegations about flaws in the person's character that was killed instead of analyzing the situation and analyzing the character, the person that did the killing. So we got to check ourselves on that. And again, I'll go deeper, but I want to keep these short. 